Bulavanaka, welcome to Speak Your Mind. I'm Rita Narayan. Today we're talking about reforms in the social welfare program. In the studio with me is Dr. Josefa Kuroi Vueta, Permanent Secretary for Social Welfare, Women and Poverty Alleviation, and the Director for Social Welfare, Mr. Rupeni Fatiaki. Gentlemen, welcome to this show. Uh, Dr. Joe, firstly, congratulations on the confirmation of your appointment Thank to you, the position of Permanent Secretary. Now, um, gentlemen, uh, firstly, Dr. Joe, uh, we're talking about reforms to the social welfare um, program. Why was there a need uh, to have these reforms in the social welfare program? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rita. I would just like, uh, before answering that question, just to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, the uh, FBC for participation uh, today. Uh, it's lovely to come on air and uh, uh, give information to, to the public. We are going to go in the angle of uh, simplicity and clarity in this regard. And uh, basically to, um, to inform members of the public, uh, number one is on the, uh, shift on the uh, reform and uh, what are the, uh, uh, the programs uh, that are involved within uh, social welfare. And secondly, to uh, also note that this is uh, an ongoing process uh, within government. Now, obviously, government do uh, uh, looked at uh, the uh, poverty issue in Fiji in a more robust way, and uh, it was based on the household income survey in 2008 and 2009. It was for the first time ever that we were able to uh, to visually map. What were the areas in Fiji, based on province and also in divisions and also in districts, were the areas that we needed to identify, we needed to, uh, you know, to target for poverty reduction? That was a very unique uh, uh, recommendation or outcome of that uh, of that uh, of that survey. And uh, more to that, it was uh, clearly shown that there was a reduction in poverty nationally. But there were some uh, differences or variations when you go you know, deeper into the various levels of uh, identification. And one thing that was uh, very key within the eyes of the government was to make the change. Make the change, uh, basically, number one, is um, the impact has been uh, rather loose and uh, the coverage, too, of beneficiaries were low. Uh, and uh, the second thing, we needed to improve service delivery. And the third important uh, reason is that uh, we knew that there were people that were actually abusing the system. And there were people that were double dipping within the system. Now, based on that, based on the uh, evidence, and these are credible evidence, uh, for say, these were evidence from the Household Income Expenditure Survey, and these were evidence uh, that were undertaken through the World Bank, you know, reform looking at uh, social protection with Fiji. We were able to convincingly, convincingly, made a clear, you know, strategy on how we should target uh, where we need to put a dollar in, where we need to invest. The government need to put in the investment to make the necessary changes. Looking at what were the drivers of poverty. And I think that was a very important factor. The important uh, uh, issue, the lessons from the, uh, from the study, we were able to identify what were the factors that were driving poverty. Now, that was very essential from planning and also from a um, uh, government perspective because we needed to you know, put in the necessary uh, strategies or approaches to those uh, vulnerable uh, population you know, to ensure that we make the impact. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, key drivers in there was actually education. Uh, second thing was uh, old age. And third thing was the number of people in the household. And uh, this was some of the, and also the employment of the uh, head of the household. And uh, it was from those findings that government was able to strategically, you know, put in the programmatic measures uh, with its resources, uh, with a clear intention that this is where we need to invest to ensure that we make the impact. 
And uh, the impact, the uh, measure that the government is uh, putting in is basically looking at the poorer of the poor in the society. Whereas in the past, you know, it was, uh, it was not focused. And uh, the basis of the, uh, of the assistance in the past was quite uh, wide uh, and it was not focused. So therefore, to measure change, it was very difficult. And we didn't have the necessary instruments to undertake that. And, uh, and the other thing, I think important to thing to say that uh, we needed to reform because uh, we noted that, that some of the beneficiaries were there for generations. Uh, you know, their, their grandparents had been uh, recipients. Their parents had been recipients. Now their generation, they are not going. So we needed to liberate them. And there was no timeline that was uh, casted upon the beneficiaries. And it was like a near lifetime, uh, basically, to be a social welfare beneficiary. That's uh, basically what I would just want to introduce the topic. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Dr. Mm-hmm. Joe. Now, you're listening to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM. And, if you, and we're talking about uh, reforms to the social welfare program. If you have any questions or any um, issues that you would like clarified concerning these reforms, you can email us on goldfm at fbc.com.fj or you can find us on Gold FM Fiji on Facebook or you can also call us on 3220906 or 3220907 and I'm sure the, our guests in studio would be uh, only too happy to clarify or answer your questions. Now, Dr. Joe, you did mention some very um, pertinent findings in this, in this survey, um, you know, that in that people had been on the, on the beneficiary list uh, for for a number of years, and there really was no way to gauge whether they, their living standards had improved or, you know, it had just sort of um, worsened. Mm. Um, and also you're talking about the coverage in terms of this, the, the benefits um, in the, through this program. It, and you also talked about, you know, cases of double dipping and abuse. What, what, what are some of the, the examples that you can highlight? Yeah, one unique thing about uh, reform that we've undertaken is uh, we've shifted away from being based, uh, from being, um, you know, assisting individuals. We are now focusing on families. So when you focus on family, you are more likely to make a ramifying impact or effect, basically, on poverty. And we're talking about the people in the in the very lowest quant- uh, quintile of poverty. Uh, so you're looking at the uh, first and second. So it's basically the poor of the poor and uh, those who are vulnerable, vulnerable groups. And we need to keep a watchful eye on those in that uh, category to ensure that they don't move down into poverty. Uh, so we have a timeline based on those who are on the welfare program. The government is very clear there's going to be a three-year and it's going to be monitored. And uh, well within this uh, program, we also have an avenue where uh, whereby we identify able-bodied people who are all recipients in whom we can move them out. So they basically move out of welfare into workfare. To identify those who can be uh, trained, you know, to have a proper, uh, you know, skills in life and move into employment, identify those who can go into active employment. Those are the areas that we are pinning down on, uh, basically to move people. Our focus is help those that really need it and to move those who can be identified into some form of opportunities in life, whether it's active employment, uh, informal sector, you know, private sector, and so on, uh, and uh, move them out of. Uh, so we have also in, in there the opportunities for those who are beneficiaries to be actively engaged in income-generating uh, opportunities and basically move out of. Uh, we put in the slogan, uh, you know, Rita, you know, it's uh, cash for work or cash for no work. Uh, obviously, in life, there are people that uh, do need to be assisted, but we need to really give to those who really deserve it. Mm-hmm. And more to that, uh, you know, the welfare, uh, you know, the welfare business is more than just a government. You know, we have many institutions, uh, good hard organizations in Fiji, who can come together, you know, to make sure that Fiji comes out of the poverty. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Joe. That's a uh, good point to end this first segment on. We'll take a short commercial break and we'll come back uh, to our guests in studio.
Welcome back. You're watching and listening to Speak Your Mind on Goal FM. I'm Rita Narayan, and in studio um, this afternoon are the Permanent Secretary for Social Welfare, Women and Poverty Alleviation, Dr. Joe Kuruevueta, and the Director of Social Welfare, Mr. Rupeni Fatiaki. And today we're talking about the social welfare reform. Now, uh, Dr. Joe, before we went to the commercial break, you you did talk about the um, survey that that uh, showed a lot of findings that brought about this uh, need to have these reforms. Now, there's two words that you mentioned, the poorest of the poor and the vulnerable group. Now, are there any definitions that you go by to identify these two groups? Yeah, yeah. thank you, Rita. Yes, they are, they are qualified definitions. And you basically... Um, you know, look at the quantiles of the population that we're looking. The lowest 20%, these are the poorest of the uh, poor. And then the next one, the, the other 20% is the vulnerable population, uh, as identified in the uh, in that survey, 2008-2009. This has been a publicized uh, survey, and uh, it's, it's a uh, publication also for public consumption. And, uh, you know, people can uh, easily, you know, download it uh, from the uh, web. Thank you. Mm. Now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fatiaki, what are some of these new social welfare programs? Thank you, Rita. Um, out of this uh, World Bank survey, uh, it was, as uh, he has alluded to, the findings uh, came up, and then uh, out of this, we the, we developed with the work of uh, the World Bank uh, assistance, we call it consultancy. Uh, there were these two new programs that were introduced. Uh, the first one was the poverty benefit scheme, and the poverty benefit scheme replaces the old uh, family assistance program. And as uh, PS has men- mentioned earlier, the family assistance program uh, targets the individual. So if an individual comes and applies, the, the, the primary individual, the assistant considers only one person within the family. But there's out of the outcome of this uh, this 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 uh, new uh, program. Uh, the, the target is now his household. So now, with, through the PPS or the Poverty Benefit Scheme, there's four people that in the household. And all of these is, the findings uh, is based on the, like PSA said, the Household Income and Expenses Survey that came out. So we look at the indicators that, uh, that they used, are also used in the, the new form that we are going to use, which we're currently using at the moment. And uh, before it was uh, through the family assistant, it was categorically based. So there was these three major categories that if you are under these three categories, then you are eligible or you, you can as- apply for this assistant. That was the chronically ill and the permanent disabled and the uh, elderly. So that's why the report highlighted to us the coverage. There was exclusion. You know, some of the people who were poor, the poorest of the poor, but they could not come into this assistant because they did not fit into those categories. So the coverage was quite poor. It was about 3%. So uh, that's the, the, uh, the uh, results of the report. So out of that, uh, we developed the poverty benefit scheme. So this replaces the family assistance scheme. So the process is um, it's a form that has been developed, and within that form is using those is HIES indicators, the Household Income Expense Survey. And one of the primary Processes or procedures that, you, that our people will do is a home visit must be done. Uh, previously, through the family assistance, uh, we do home visits, but uh, it's mean tested. So it's all depending on what the recipient tells us. Even though we our people do go and do a home visit and and observe or witness the household items and all the stuff they have in the house, it has no consideration to the outcome of the of the results. But with this new program. That's taken into consideration those indicators, the, in, the visible indicators. So that's one of the things that I'll be able to deal with. Anyone can apply now. It's open, mm. coverage, but the system will determine. So I ho- I want our people will do the home business. They will come and do the home business. And the questionnaire is such that, uh, the form is such that uh, they will be able to highlight all those indicators. So that's basically how we're going to assess the, the, the applications. So once they, they fill the form, then the system will give us the, the scoring. And there's a threshold that uh, we agree on. So if they happen to 
fall under the threshold, then they will be assisted. If they score beyond above the threshold, it's most probably they will not be assisted. Like I said, because based on the indicators that we have uh, that that's used by the HIES. Mm -hmm. So anybody could apply, but the system it's more objective in the fact that no system will score it for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently our people are doing that. And uh, yeah, first of first of all, we're just defining all those cases that were previously on family assistance, so we'll get them into the you know in the new system, and then from there we will continue with the with, with the applications or any applications that we have, and that's the the probably the benefit scheme. But then the other one that came out of this uh, survey was the social pension scheme, and this is specifically talking the old age because. Again, as PS has uh, mentioned, you know, out the out one of the outcomes of the survey is that uh, this discovered that you know households who have elderly people tend to be poor, and that's why this program has been introduced to look at this issue. And also, currently, we are working. The ministry is working. Uh, we are the ministry. The main ministry is working with developing the old age uh, uh, <coughs> legislations. For old people, so this is part of the government's contribution to our old age people, and anyone above the age of seventy can apply for this assistance. But no, there, there's a criteria. Uh, if they are not recipients of uh, superannuation, which is FNPF, uh, the government pension, and the aftercare fund, which is for ex-soldiers, uh, this is taking the poorest of the way, and also those who are receiving other assistance from, from government, from the department. Mm -hmm. So it's targeting the, the the old age people above the age of 70. Uh, it's the first time we're doing that. And we had considered when you did the proposal. Mm -hmm. and uh, So but we're looking at as the years progress, maybe the age will reduce. I mean, we'll reduce to eight, the age to you know, 69 and 70. But but that's the we, the first target is the, the 70. Because a lot of questions has been asked, why, uh, why not 60? Why not 65? But this is the... the, the initial stage of this program and the forms are available in our in all our our offices in in the districts and also with it's also on the website and all you need to do is just to fill that form get somebody to certify it and forward it to our our offices and we will be uh, currently we are uh, this 5,000 uh, more than 5,000 recipients uh, who are now receiving that assistance? Elderly people who are receiving the assistance. This is the social pension. This scheme. is the social pension scheme. Yeah. Thank you. And then we have the care and protection allowance, which is specifically targeting the targeting the, the children, from uh, one year, babies up to the age of eighteen. But that's the juvenile, the definition of a juvenile. So this assistance is also given, especially for single mothers, uh, disabled spouses, uh, children who are living in poor families, who doesn't have the head of the household is not there to provide. So they can apply for this. It's specifically for to help them with the welfare mm -hmm. and education. Mm -hmm. And once they reach the age of eighteen, then the assistant is uh, uh, closed. Mm -hmm. But while they are in the in the system, uh, the department will work with them to ensure to help them that, that when they move out of the system, at least there's something that they can fall back, like income generating projects or further education, whatever it is for the children. Okay. And the final one, the assistance, the main uh, for the assistance that we administer in the department is the bus fare. Okay. Again, it's it's a recent one that just came in last year. Okay. Mr. Fatake, we'll have to just uh, take a short commercial break and then we'll come back to uh, talking about bus fares and, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions uh, on that as well. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind, and we're talking about social welfare reforms, and in studio with me is Mr. Uh, Mr. Rupeni Fatiaki, Director of Social Welfare, as well as Dr. Joe Kurivueta, Permanent Secretary for Social Welfare, Women and Poverty Alleviation. Now, Mr. Fatiaki, before we went to the break, you did talk about one of the, um, the new social welfare programs, and this particularly relates to the bus fare scheme. If you could talk about that as well, please. Thank you. The bus fare scheme... 
is an agreement between government and the the PG Bus Operators Association and also the taxi union. And from this agreement, uh, uh, elderly persons above the age of 60 and permanent disabled persons is included in this assistance. For those who are over the age of 60, for the elderly persons, uh, they can travel the bus uh, only paying 50% of the fare. But for the permanent disabled, uh, it's free. So we, the application is processed in our office. What we need to do is to provide the passport photos for the ID cards and the birth certificates, and we process the, the ID cards. Now, uh, with the recent uh, electronic uh, and by cards, uh, previously Fiji Bus Fair, uh, Fiji Bus uh, Operators Association used to issue us with the vouchers. So once an application comes and when we do the cards, we give them the vouchers. Every time they travel, they'll show the card, ID card that was produced by us, and they'll show the vouchers so they can travel. Now, with the inclusions of the of the MPSA, uh they can they'll show the card and then they'll give their their, their electronic card for it. Uh, but because um, some of the buses have not the machines, not yet, so they can still use number pay the bus their the cash. Uh, there's no need for for them to give the vouchers. But I think we have issues because some of the bus companies are not giving this information to their drivers uh, that you know the ID card surface. As long as they show the ID card, they should be able to pay the uh, the half half fare. And for the permanent disabled, it's free. Just so there's a difference between the two cards. Mm -hmm. The elderly card is yellow, and the permanent disabled card is red. So that is to switch one is which. And um, that's for the for the bus fare assistance. Thank you, Mr. Fatiaki. Now um, you did talk about the um, the application process. Now, is there a timeline to applications being processed? And you know, because you you need you did mention that you know, for example, with the poverty benefit scheme, you know, you, you actually need visitations to verify a lot of the information. Are there sort of timelines set for the applications to be processed and for the applicants to be informed? Yes, you qualify, or no, you don't. Yes, we have given thirty working days, which is a month. But we're trying to bring that. We we trying. At the moment, we're testing it, but we're hoping to know to improve our efficiency. And we're trying to look at the results and see, trying to bring down the the, the number of days that's required for for the processing of the application. But currently, we are, we have given the thirty day working days for the process of this, those applications. And what what are some of the obstacles that you found to to getting this, uh, you know, meeting your targets of if you're given thirty days of getting them, of getting them approved or yeah, disproved? Is it? If, if need it, be. It's, yes, some of the challenges that we face are people facing because you know, part of these uh, applications you know, would require documents, documents that they will have to provide for us, and one of the most important documents is the birth certificate. And uh, we have come across cases where people don't have the birth certificate. And that is a big challenge. And then we have come across cases where people are not registered, especially for the social pension scheme. So we're trying to work together with the the original general to see as to how we can go about trying to, to especially this is in the maritime area, in order for us to, to, to see a way how we could get these people into this. Because, uh, one of the requirements is the basic thing, eh? there's a system, and uh, now you know, we're using the electronic system, that's the, the, the primary document that we use. But uh, yeah, those are some of the challenges. Uh, sometimes, you know, when we um. When we give, you know, once the uh, the applications is approved, and then they are expected to open their bank accounts, and to open the bank account, you know, you have to require the TIN number, the certificate, and then you know, sometimes when they go and they don't come back for some time, so the application will be still sitting there as you no know, approved application, but uh, it's not implemented or activated because we still yet to receive those uh, those uh, those uh, documents, and you know, like. Uh, as our people are doing the recertification now, especially in the maritime areas, you know, we are sending teams. And as we look through the years, as we looked at the operations and how the assistance has been administered, we have discovered that you know most of the maritime people are somehow it's not fairly distributed because a lot of them are 
I will need to provide that because uh, we were not able to visit them frequently and they miss out on this assistance. It's those who are around the main offices in the urban and town areas that are uh, that have easy access to us, these are the ones that benefit more from this assistance. So we're looking at uh, strategizing our people in order to, to try and go more often to the to the to the maritime areas. Currently there's a team that's in Kandao for the last three weeks. It's quite an expensive exercise, uh, you know, because the the fuel, the boats don't go over, and there's the number of challenges that are facing the maritime areas. Uh, then, you know, uh, currently, the certification that's going on, they have to, like I said, home visit is a must. So they have to go and visit every individual house. Sometimes when they come to the houses, the families have moved. Uh, families have gone out of the, they're not in, they're not in the house. Some, they have also discovered that they're deceased. So this is the kind of challenges that we, our people are facing down there. So you have to go out and you have to make sure that all your records and all are all updated. updated. All other agencies are on the same page as you in terms of, you know, ensuring that the necessary documents and all are, are available. It's quite a task. It is. Okay. Thank you. You're listening to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM. If you have any questions, uh, you can email us on goldfm at fbc.com.fj or find us on Facebook on Gold FM Fiji. Or you can also call us on 3220906 or 3220907, and we're talking about the social welfare reforms. Now, um, Mr. Fatiaki, uh, maybe if you could talk about the advantages of these new programs. And you've mentioned a few, the Poverty Benefit Scheme, the Social Pen Pension Scheme, and the Care and Protection Program. Yeah, as I, I men mentioned earlier, you know, comparing the Family Assistance and the Poverty Benefit Scheme, uh, the coverage... Like I said earlier, you know, um, there was exclusions uh, in trying to address poverty. You know, there were people who were poor that were not in the system before because of the categories. For example, you, you have a laborer who's laboring or working in the, in the sugar cane, barely working for a farmer and during the sugar cane cutting season. That's the only employment that he has. Apart from that, there's no other employment. And he's staying in a tin shack, maybe the edge of the farmer's farm, plantation. And when you go and visit, when some of them did apply, when you go and visit and you find the house, there's nothing, almost any, nothing in the household. Very, I mean, poverty, you can see that it's, they're poor. But because they don't fall in those three categories, okay. you know, they're not, not elderly, they are not chronically ill, and they are also not permanently disabled, so they cannot come into the system. But with this new program, will be able to cover them. I mean, they can come in mm -hmm. because the, the target or the approach is poorest of the poor. Okay? The other thing is the, 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 the people trying to defraud the system. The home visit, now that it's a must, then you'll be able now, you'll be able to witness exactly what they have. Uh, exams you can give, you know, some people who came into the system in the past, uh, they came in under chronic illness. Obviously, they know some doctor, so the doctor gave them the medical report to say they know this person cannot work. Now when we do do the home visits, then you find you know, they're living in they have everything. Uh, electric electric appliances, no TV, flat screen, fridge, microwave, all those things. So but they managed to come in because of the, the category. Mm -hmm. So this new program will be able to help us, okay. you know, yeah. Exclude uh those that don't is not uh, deserving to be assisted and include those that are supposed to be assisted, the poorest of the poor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fatiaki. We will now go to a short break and come back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind, and on this program we're talking about social welfare reforms. And uh, before we went to that break, we were talking about some of the benefits of these new programs that are being offered um, in, the, in the social welfare uh, program. Now, um, Dr. Joe, the welfare graduation program, what is that all about? 
Yeah, Rita, just before I go on to that, uh, I just wanted to add on from uh, Mr. Fatiak's uh, remarks. The system that we're talking about is a very transparent, it's accountable, uh, it's a measurable uh, system where we basically will be able to truly identify those that uh, really deserve to be assisted. That's point number one. Point number two is that even at the end of that qualification uh, mechanism, if our people still feel uh, that we still need to consider them, then there's an option there. So the door is not fully closed mm-hmm. for those particular cases. But, you know, it's a very targeted system. Uh, it's built basically based on evidence, and this is the system. And the beauty thing about it is you can measure the change towards the end of it. Uh, you can even uh, truly identify those that, we, that are going to be wind off and those who are going to stay in the system. Now, the graduation program, the real intention about it is basically to, to identify those that can be helped. So looking at the able-bodied uh, people that can be moved from the welfare into the workfare. And uh, in here, we work with the uh, Fiji Correctional Services in the, um, in the collaboration to rehabilitate prisoners in that regard. So they, it's on a uh, partnership arrangement. Uh, we give them a grant to that matter. And uh, the normal government procedure is that they will still have to follow uh, on a quarterly basis in terms of acquittal and is fully audited at the end of the year. Uh, in fact, uh, the strict uh, the system says that if you do not acquit in quarter one, you don't get quarter two grant, you know, that sort of arrangement. And then we also look to identify those that are within the program, you know, those that can be uh, trained into a better livelihood, those who can go into you know, formal uh, academic, uh, you know, programs and, uh, you know, for their knowledge and skills and create uh, doors, opportunities for, you know, for employment in life. Uh, that's the sort of area. We also look at uh, microfinance, uh, you know, enterprises uh, to see, you know, what sort of catchment they can uh, get hold of, you know, so that we uh, comprehensively address the, you know, the population that should be doing in there. And we look at, uh, you know, people uh, like the end uh, CS Med uh, to, to work with them. Uh, but this is an area of concern for us because it's something that uh, uh, that needs to be improved. Uh, because the intention here is to to win people who are able-bodied and, you know, winning up of uh, welfare. Yeah, in fact, if you look at the past, uh, welfare, bene- uh, the social welfare is like a bondage to some people. And uh, it's a way to liberate them, you know, that, uh, you know, you've got a life uh, to go for. Uh, you need to move to another level. You need to break free. You know, there's a spirit, uh, you know, behind the graduation program. Mm-hmm. And uh, more to that, uh, I think we haven't covered is the issue about women. Uh, and um, we have kept it to this part uh, because we, be, we also need to, we also work, you know, in uh, poverty reduction with addressing women. Uh, because uh, women are very uh, important, uh, you know, sectors in the community. Uh, in fact, I want to share with you, Rita, we have a new uh, passionate theme now. Uh, when you develop a woman, you develop a family, a community, and a nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's something that uh, we keep our, you know, our minds, uh, you know, fairly um, uh, attending to the issues about women. Uh, empowering them uh, in employment, uh, looking at business opportunities for them, looking at income generating, uh, you know, potentials. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a continuous that uh, we're looking there, you know, uh, looking at the uh, women's organizations in rural uh, areas, uh, even in uh, urban centers. And it's a very key target, not only the, uh, you know, the uh, older people, but also women. Now, uh, Dr. Joe, just with regards to this uh, program, now, how, because it, it, it involves a lot of things. You're, you're talking about changing mindsets. You're cha- talking about, you know, changing old habits. And one of the, you know, the, the issues that you highlighted was, um, you know, people who have been on the social welfare benefit schemes have been there for years. So now all of a sudden you're, you're looking at, you know, moving them into getting out of that that you know, that mentality of you constantly keep receiving something 
and you know to be able to go out and say oh look there's this opportunity for you to to earn some money by you know opening up a um you know a little shop or, or sewing and 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 selling your goods now how has that been that transition from from this stage to that stage it's a challenge because uh change is a scare uh when you're dealing with people and you need to help them make their decision to change because the change is actually in people uh you know once you're able to uh you know get into them and uh instigate change uh and change is a process uh, as you well know Rita uh but you know you can uh, encourage them uh there are opportunities in life much better than you are in right now you know to receiving a limited amount of money when you are able bodied person and you have many many opportunities in life to make it why now mm-hmm. you know this is sort of uh, encouraging uh, and we go through uh many scenarios and some people basically don't want to change and some people are very eager to change there are people who are hesitant for for some matter but you need to help people make the change uh we challenge ourselves to do it uh and it's also from our part it's also enterprising uh satisfying when you see somebody who had been a welfare you know to make a business uh, to us that is a beautiful feeling you know to see at the end of the day and that's really the intention of the graduation program mm-hmm. and it's it's obviously something that you can't do on your own so you need the private sector you need the communities you need ngos you need the other government agencies to be on the same page as well for you to be able to to progress this absolutely you're truly right rita mm. so how are you getting this this message right across the board to everybody yeah we work with all other sectors we work with uh, women's organizations uh, faith based uh, even with the banks for that matter uh, and the other ngos uh, to you know to to work in a very united manner by truly identifying what are the communities that need to be identified and uh, put in all our efforts in there and make the change uh, because that's how we can address uh, poverty Thank you Dr. Joe. Now we'll take a short commercial break and we will come back again in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM. I'm Rita Narayan. Now uh, in studio we have uh, Mr. Rupeni Fatiaki, Director of Social Welfare and Permanent Secretary for Social Welfare, Dr. Joe Kuruvueta. And we're talking about social welfare reforms. Now, uh, Mr. Fatiaki, before we went to the break, we were talking about this welfare graduation program and um, the welfare to workfare theme. Um, are, are you able to... Are there any case studies or any success stories uh, under this program so far that you might want to highlight? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of I mean success stories that we have. Um there's a uh, a case of a elderly person who's who was receiving from us and then he went through this program and part of this program I mean we're working with uh, next med and this is like like I said is a phase that we take them through phases that we take them through. Now, uh, next met does the training on financial literacy, budgeting, uh, budget pro- uh, proposal, project proposal, and they do the implementation. So after going through this phase, then they're given the funding. Uh, funding comes from the ministry and the seed funding, so for them to Im- to implement their projects. Now we have a case here in in, in uh, Talib, uh, of Talib, of this recipient who has now a poultry farm. Started small, but now he's operating. And he's selling to the stuff in the office. Uh, we have um, another case in Tabo, uh, uh, where a farmer he now has his he wanted to do goat farming. He had the land, so now he's doing goat farming. Uh, we have women who are engaged uh, in uh, handicraft uh, uh, skills business. Now they they're doing their own business, selling their own handicrafts in the hotels in the western side. And some a couple of them have been employed uh, by by some of the hotels. Uh, we work with hotels and arrange with it. They go in for the training. 
and they have been employed. And like for the children that come out the care and protection, like some of them come to the homes, to the homes that are looked after by the by the state. So we look at them, you know, the 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 possibilities. I mean, we have through the program put one of the students to the university, got him a VC scholarship. He has graduated now. He's working in one of the banks in in uh, Suva. So these are the success stories that you now it's though we it's not really publicized, but you now we have a lot of success stories mm -hmm. uh, uh, with this 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 initiative. It takes time. I mean, it's not never easy to you know to just pluck them out, you know, and then we come. So we need to monitor them, we need to continue to encourage them and help them. You know? Once they begin to see the the positive changes, they become you know, they begin to grasp what we're trying to help. And, and like Dr. Had said, you know, one of the things is you know, changing the mindset. Uh, you know, $60 is sometimes that's the amount they give. And they're so uh, caught up with that amount that they don't realize, you no, know, some of them, we, when we, they started working, and this is $60, $60 for a month, okay, from, giving, from government. Now when they, started, when they started doing working or they working in the government factories, they're able to receive $70 a week, which is much, much more to what they're receiving. But unfortunately, they don't see the difference. So, you know, we need to change the mindset. You know, look, you are, you are receiving more as what, you know, uh, government are giving you in a month. Mm -hmm. And once they begin to see this, you know, these realities, they begin to have that confidence in themselves. Mm -hmm. And they begin to venture out uh, more confidently into, into, pub into the public and not becoming self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a lot of success stories. Yeah. Okay, they just <clears throat> haven't been highlighted no. yet. <laughs> okay. Now, are, are there any complaints or appeals uh, procedures or panel that, that people can go to for uh, redress? Yes. Uh, there's a process where if people are not happy with the service or the applications have been uh, turned down, they can appeal. Uh, and there's a standard letter that we give to them and the address is there. They can write the appeals to us and we, our people will do the their own investigations and then it comes to the panel who sits and looks at the findings of those uh, investigations and the decisions is made there and that. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, before we uh, close this session, uh, Dr. Joe or uh, Mr. Fatiaki, is there any message that you would like to convey to the listeners? Because uh, these are significant changes that are taking place uh, in as far as the social welfare department is concerned. You know, is there any pertinent issue that you would like to, you know, just yeah, highlight? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Rita. I think it's an opportunity to uh, concretely mention to you know, to our people in Fiji, that government has stepped in a big way, you know, to, um, as a solution to poverty, uh, not only in a big way, but a number of measures. Eh? Now, the programs that we alluded to, uh, we did not uh, mention, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, much about, uh, you know, addressing poverty through women, but it's an issue as well, and there are programmatic approaches too within the, you know, uh, empowering women. And the other beauty thing, the opportunities to address poverty are real, and you know we, we, it's there for us to take it. Uh, and Fiji has got a lot of opportunities, and there are good partnerships abroad, you know, for to enable uh, our women, you know, to earn an income and move out of poverty, uh, especially those in the rural areas where a lot of poverty is uh, still um, uh, still noted, and uh, we do note that. Uh, you know, that uh, coming in from that particular angle. When you have a solution to the problem, then you can make a change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Now, Mr. Fatiaki, just mm. before we end, uh, once again, if people are, you know, um, want to apply for any of these, uh, for any of the, the schemes, where can they access the forms from? For the SPS form, the social pension scheme for the elderly, they can access it in the website or the admin, uh, provincial administrator's uh, offices and our offices. Uh, for the poverty benefit scheme, this form is not uh, given up. This form is that's when they come and visit you and they, our offices will fill it there and then. The care and protection allowance, uh, they will have to bring all those documents and the form will be filled in our offices. And we have 15 offices all over the place. Of course, for the bus fare, they just bring those forms to our, to our offices. They, they be addressed. Okay. 
Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Dr. Joe Korovueta, Permanent Secretary for Women, Social Welfare and Poverty Alleviation, and Mr. Rupeni Fatiaki, Director of Social Welfare. Thank you very much um, for taking time out of your very busy schedules to be a part of this show. And we look forward to, um, to speaking to you once again, um, you know, highlighting some of the other issues that are related to your uh, respective ministry. Nakavaka Levo, I'm Rita Narayan. Goodbye.